Now, by giving an absolute reference, by providing the bonuses in a separate table, what is the advantage that we are going to get? Suppose the bonus changes. Let's say tomorrow I decide to give 5,000. Okay, suppose the bonus changes. Then I just have to change it over here, nowhere else. It will get automatically applied everywhere else, you see. Suppose now suddenly we decided to give bonus even to those employees who are getting a performance rating of one. They will get 100 rupees. Then what, what will happen? Everywhere else it gets reflected. Okay. Uh, but here also I'll have to change because here I didn't do it based on a test. I did, did it based on the true condition. In this case, 100. And let me copy that formula down. Okay. Is IFS clear to everybody? <clears throat> um, no, no, it's not as simple as simply the number of brackets that you open and close. Rohini, just observe this particular formula. Every time we are giving an if and check, putting the condition if, if, isn't it? This is what happens if you are using nested ifs. If inside an if, then inside that another if, then inside that another if. This is an if inside another if, not a separate if by itself, independent one. No. These are nested. So innermost one will be computed first. This also takes more time because the innermost if condition is tested first. Then this one will be looked for. Then this one. Like that it is basically checking a lot of things. Nested ifs. Okay. Whatever sequence it goes. But with IFS, let me send you this formula in the chat. And now compare it with this formula that we have written. Okay. So when there are a lot of conditions, IFS would be better. When there is only uh, there are a few conditions, you can go with nested ifs. If there is only one condition, then you can go with a simple if. So true option that we give under IFS, it is a nice, it is a beautiful way to catch the default value. Very well, you can catch the default value with that true option that is available. Okay. So now let's move on to a few more if statements. Okay, so this is my data. There, let's say there is some data wherein we um, there are different types of uh, products like coffee, tea, herbal tea, and espresso being sold in different states. So four to five states of data I have here, and they are being. Uh, this is the statistics. Let's say of two thousand thirteen and two thousand twelve. Okay, for two different years I have the statistics of the sales of a variety of products: tea, coffee, herbal tea, and uh, espresso across different states and in each of these states there is a target that is given to them which is called as budget sales or simply we can rename it I'll just call it target sales okay it will be easier that way okay, let's say this is the target sales and uh, the actual sales also is there this is the let's say actual sales okay now, if you look at difference, I have obtained the difference between the actual sales and the target sales. Look at difference. It is basically this. I'm taking the data in E2 and subtracting D2. Okay, I'm getting the difference by subtracting these two. So, if the difference is negative, what would it mean? If the difference is negative, it would mean that the actual sales is less than the target sales, isn't it? We could not reach the target. The target was higher and actual made is lesser. Therefore, the difference is negative. And wherever the difference is positive, it means the actual sales is better than the target that was given. Uh, 
okay in uh, we, we are uh, saying that if the difference is positive it means that the actual sales is better than the target we have gone beyond the expectation the, the, that particular state in the sales of that particular product has gone above the expectation it has gone beyond the target and overperformed it performed well okay now okay there is one question um yes the ifs statement that we had talked about right you can um you can reference even a cell over there okay swarup has here you can definitely reference a cell even without without hard coding the value so one moment I'll show you. Okay. I think I'll have to just type it in. Okay, you can simply lock it in place over there and get it. And suppose I update this number now from zero, suppose I change it and give a bonus of 100. You see how it got updated in the formula. So rather than hard coding a value over here, you can definitely go ahead and reference the cell. Okay, make it an absolute reference so that whenever the value here changes, accordingly it will get updated. Let's say we increase this to 5000. You see how it gets reflected here. Suppose I increase this to 1000. It gets reflected. Suppose I increase this to, to 5. Okay, that is the idea. Basically, that is why we are referencing a table. Okay, before we proceed to the next set of uh, topics or things that we are going to cover, is this clear? Whatever we have discussed about simple if, nested if, and IFS. So let's understand this data. We are just looking at the various products that are sold across different states, across two different years. Uh, we have the goal and we have the actual sales. We have, and difference is computed here. It is not a member. It has been computed. If the difference is positive, it means that state is doing well. It has achieved the target. If the difference is negative, it means it could not reach the target. Now we are familiar with the max function and the min function. Max and min are clear to us, isn't it? It gets the maximum value. It gives the minimum value. Suppose if I just type in max of the data present in this particular column, it will give me what is the maximum sales. It is 17,505 over here. Over here, that is the maximum sales. Okay. So if I want to get the minimum, I'll just have to replace max with min and it will give me the minimum sale value, minimum value in that column, which is 1,129. All right. So max and min present in a column 
we can get it but how do we get it based on certain conditions that is what i'm doing here that is what i'm going to show you over here so i need to find out what is the maximum sales not for the overall data not for the entire data but i need the maximum sales made by the state of colorado in the year 2013 okay in the year of 2013 what is the maximum sales that this particular state made? Then how to give that condition? Equal to, we have a function called max IFS. Now again, this function may not be available on older versions. It is there in uh, relatively newer versions. Now, what is it that we have to mention? What are the arguments that it expects? Okay, what are the arguments that it expects? First, max range. We are asking it to look for the maximum value, but in where, from where is it supposed to choose the maximum, that range. I need, I want it to choose the maximum value of sales present in the actual sales column. So I'm going to select it, do a command shift down, control shift down for the uh, whole thing to be selected. So I want it to identify the maximum value present in this column. E, E2 to E49 is my data from that data, comma. Okay, we need the maximum value in that range, but based on what condition, right? We want it based on certain conditions. So when I hit comma, you see what is the next argument? Criteria range one. Okay, I need to look for something. In which range am I supposed to look for it? There is a condition that you will mention and I'm supposed to look for that condition somewhere. Where am I supposed to look for it? In which range am I supposed to search for the true condition? So that range, let's say, is the year. Okay, look at the year column. Look at the year column. That is my range one. And what is the criteria? It is supposed to be 2013. So I'm going to select 2013. Of course, we could have typed 2013, but we are referencing to a cell so that we can change the value in the cell and accordingly, we get the maximum value. Comma. Now it's asking, what is the next criteria range? Okay, now I want Excel to look at the data in the state column. Okay, look at the data in the state column and then look for that particular state which is mentioned here and get the maximum. Just look at the formula. What is it trying to tell? Let me delete everything else. It, it gave us, but let me just remove everything else. We will continue with this data set tomorrow also. So look at what has happened. I'm telling, give me the maximum value. From where should I get you the maximum value? From the data that is present in this range, in this column, actual sales. Okay. And the, the maximum value has to be obtained from the max range based on what all conditions. I'm, I have two conditions. What is my first condition? It, I need the maximum from the year 2013. Second condition is for the state Colorado. Okay. So where is year present? That is the next range where Tableau has to look for. It has to look for 2013 in this range. So that is my criteria range one. And what is it looking for? For whatever year I specify in H3. What is the second criteria range? Whichever column has the names of the states. And what am I asking it to look for? I'm looking for whatever state is mentioned in I3. If I do this and apply, you can see it has obtained the maximum sales for Colorado from 2013, which happens to be 8,446. I hope you'll understood. Okay, now what, what if my condition changes? I want to find out what is the maximum sales of Florida. Florida. It is bringing from 2013, the maximum is 6,107. But I want to know what is the maximum sales of Florida in 2012. It changed. It is 5867. So in 2012, if we look at Florida, the maximum is 5867. Five, this one here, 5867. Okay. So by not hard coding the values in the formula, what did we achieve? We are referencing a particular cell to apply conditions. Whatever year I want, I can mention here. Whatever state I might want, I'll mention here. 
it will look in the year range for that particular year in the state range for that particular state and it is getting the maximum value here we have given two conditions like that you can keep giving as many conditions as you want okay i hope you all understood